Hey there, in this video we are going to continue to look at solving radical equations. But the new idea here is going to be that we are going to encounter some extraneous solutions. Or in other words, solutions that emerge from the process of solving but aren't actually solutions to the original equation. If we're going to solve this equation right here, we need to do like before and isolate our radical expression so that we can square both sides. So I'm going to want to move that 5 over to that side. If I move the 5 over, I'm going to get square root of x all by itself on this side. If I subtract the 5, I get negative 3 over here. I have square root of x equals negative 3. If I am going to square both sides, I am going to end up with x. If I square the negative 3, I get positive 9. That's the solution to my equation that I've got through this process. But here's the first place where it's going to be really important to check your solution. First of all, let's check that I did everything right here. When I moved the 5 over, I made it my, negative 5 on the other side. 2 minus 5 is the negative 3. So that's the right value over there. I squared both sides. I squared this side. It gives me x. I squared this side. It gives me positive 9. I'm going to take this value now and check it. So I'm going to write out the original equation and sub in the 9. Okay, and then I'm going to sub in my 9 here instead of x. And then we're going to evaluate each side here. Square root of 9 is 3. Plus 5 equals 2. And you can probably already see something's going on here. 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 is definitely not equal to 2. These are not equal. These are not equal. This is a solution that we got through the process of solving it, but it ends up that it is not a solution to the original equation. Now why does that happen? Why do we get a solution that isn't actually a solution? It is because of this step right here, because squaring, the idea of squaring both sides of something can make two things that aren't equal become equal. On this side we had a negative 3 at that point. On the other side, well, my solution was 9, which would mean that this would have been a 3, a positive 3 on that side. These are definitely not equal. 3 and negative 3 are not equal. But as soon as I square both sides of them, they become equal because they're both 9. Squaring both sides is sometimes going to create things being equal, and because of that, solutions that aren't actually solutions to the original equation. This is called an extraneous solution. You can also call it an extraneous root. An extraneous solution is one that emerges from the process of solving but isn't actually a valid solution to the original equation. All right, extraneous solution. So let's go back up here. What that means is, since that's the only solution I got, and it's not actually a valid solution, if I'm forced to say what my answer is here, I need to say no solution. That equation has no solution. Now, if you looked at it carefully at the start, you might have been able to see and recognize that there would be no solution just by the way that equation is put together because you have square root of something plus 5 and that is supposed to equal a number that's only 2. If you have 5, square root of x added on, square root of x is never going to be negative. At the least it's going to be a 0. If you have something that the lowest it can be a 0 plus 5, there's no way that it can be a 2. All right. Now even if you don't recognize that, in the end as long as you check your solution you'll recognize that there is no solution. All right, let's make a bit of space here and do that last one. All right, now, to solve this one, we have this radical expression right there. But there's another term here, so we can't just square it as is. We need to isolate this radical. To do that, we're going to move the 3 to the other side. So what this is going to say then is it's going to say square root x minus 1 on the left and it's going to say x minus 3 on the right. 
Now that we have the, the radical all by itself, we can square both sides. We can square this. But this is a binomial over here. So when we square it, we need to square it as a binomial and recognize there's going to be several terms there. The left side's easy. You just have x minus 1 when you square that square root. But the other side, don't forget, x minus 3 squared is actually x minus 3 times x minus 3. So it's x squared minus 3x minus 3x, or in other words, minus 6x, and then that last term is plus 9, is what you have over there. That's a quadratic because it has that x squared in it. So instead of trying to isolate x directly, we're going to move everything to one side and make it equal 0, and then try and factor it, or failing that, use the quadratic formula. So if I move those two over, the x becomes minus x, so it means I'm going to have minus 7x there. And the minus 1 becomes plus 1, so it means I'm going to have plus 10 there. And then left on this side is a 0. This does factor. It factors to x minus 2 and x minus 5. So that means that x is 2 or 5. So we have two potential solutions here. So I'm going to check them really quickly here by writing the original equation. Now I'm going to make a little bit more space for myself here. First, so if I check the thing here, I'm going to write the original equation. 3 plus square root x minus 1 and check that that equals x. I'm going to substitute the number that we had in there, which was, we'll do this one first, the 2. And then, of course, I have to sub it in over here as well, 2. And then we'll see if we evaluate each side what we have. We have 3 plus, square root of 2 minus 1 is 1, which is 3 plus 1, which is 4. 4 definitely does not equal 2, right? This is not equal. So this is not a solution. What I'm going to do up here is I'm going to cross it out and say that I'm going to reject that solution. It's a solution that came from the solving, but it's not actually a solution. If I'm going to check the other one here now, uh, maybe instead of rewriting the whole thing, I'll just reuse this so I can check quickly. If I put my 5 in here and put 5 over there, and now if I evaluate each side, this is a 4. Uh, square root of 4 is 2, and 3 plus 2 is 5. This actually is equal. 5 is 5, so this one works. This one's okay, right? That one's okay. The 2 needs to be rejected. So there's actually only one solution here, and that is x equals 5. Right? Even though you get two solutions through the solving process, one of them has to be thrown away because it's an extraneous solution. All right. So that's a look at solving radical equations where you encounter extraneous solutions or solutions that emerge during the process of solving but aren't actually solutions to the original equation and therefore need to be rejected.